Hey, welcome back. If you've been following along, you should have a dragon now that's able to jump over some stumps, and we have stumps that get reused. In fact, if I zoom out, we should see the stumps popping back to the right as they get to the end. Pretty cool and all, but we need to add a challenge, so it's time to add some enemies. So I'm going to stop playing, and we're going to go into the art folder. And here we should have a red dragon that we haven't used yet, so we're going to take the red dragon and just drop him out onto the scene. Notice that he is behind this... Um, background though we can't see him in fact let me go back to the regular transformer the rect tool that i use and i can see he's outlined here but i can't actually see his position the reason for this is that the order and layer and the z position are the same for the dragon and the background so when they're the same it's going to draw well in kind of a random order you see that we don't really have control what we want to do instead is select the red dragon and change this order and layer. If we bring the order and layer up even to a value of one, it's gonna show in front of everything that has a lower layer. Now, if I brought that background up to a two, you'll see that it's now, again, ahead of them, and it's even in front of our dragon. So let's set that back to a zero, and we've got our big red dragon here in the front. So I'm gonna select him on the Rect Transform tool. I'll hold Shift, and I'll scale him down, get him about the right size. In fact, I might just go to here and scale and just type in 0 .5, 0 0.5, and remember Z doesn't matter because we're in 2D, so I can just put it in a 1 or a 0.5. It's not going to make a difference. Now, I do want to flip this guy around. I want him facing the left because I want him flying at our dragon. So I could switch to the Rotate tool, and I could even grab this little green line and rotate him and spin him around. I also want to point out that we could also grab the red line and flip him upside down or the blue line and spin him over. I don't really want to do any of those though, so I'm going to go to his rotation on the transform. Put in a zero, a zero and a zero to flip him, or reset him, and then let's set the Y to 180. There we go, we've just flipped around on that Y axis, 180 degrees, so he's facing towards the left. Next, I want to make him move, so we're going to add our move script. We'll go to assets, go to our scripts folder, and remember we can either add component, and I could start typing move left, but this time I wanted to show it a little bit different. So we're going to take the move left script and click and drag, don't release, and then drop it into the inspector with the red dragon selected. And it should just add it on to him. The other thing we need is a polygon collider. So we'll add component and we'll go down to physics 2D. If you have something filtered, make sure you hit the little X. Go to physics 2D and we'll find that polygon collider 2D. We got that little hitbox around him. So now we should be able to collide with our player. Let's hit play and see what happens. Oh, look at that. Our dragon is going backwards. There's a reason for this, though. So let's stop playing, and let's take a look at our move left script. Our move left script. Well, let's open it up in our Visual Studio Editor. Our move left script uses transform.translate, and then we give it a vector, which is really we're giving it left times delta time and time speed. So we're giving it a left value, which is going to be like an x of negative 1, and we're just shrinking that down a lot by multiplying it by time.delta time and speed. So you can imagine this would be like a vector with a one for the x, a zero for the y, and a zero for the z, and then we multiply it by a tiny little number, and this becomes like 0.03 or something, something tiny. That's what we're getting here is a small x value or a negative small x value and no y or z. That's cool and all, but this is relative to our character. So when we translate and we move it with this vector here, we're moving it relative to our character, and since our character is turned around, when we move him left, you know, instead of going left, he's facing the other way, so he's going uh, world right and left on our left for him, but I guess we're right for the world. We can change this though. So if we go to the end of translate, right after the word speed, before the parentheses, and put a comma in, you'll get this little pop-up saying that there are six different ways that we can call transform.translate. We were using the first one that just takes this translation vector. But now it's saying, hey, we could use the second one. In fact, we could scroll through and see all of the options, but we really care about number two. And that allows us to give a space that it's relative to. So if I hit space and just look, it auto-completed. I can even just hit period and then choose world or self. And I want to pick world. So we set it to world space, go back and hit play. Now what's going to happen is it's going to move left in the world regardless of the direction that it's facing. Let's see. There we go, our dragon is moving left and we should be able to bump into him. Let's give him a couple more seconds to get over here. Come on, little dragon. We'll speed him up though. There we go, so he hit. Now I wanna make a couple little changes real quick. I wanna select my dragon and speed him up first. So let's give him a speed of like five. 
Now, I also don't like how much the background is kind of popping out. So I'm going to select the background and I'm going to change the color on the sprite render. Make sure you have the forest background selected. I'm going to select the color and I'm not going to pick like a red or something weird or a green or whatever these colors out here. I don't really care about the outside color because I'm not really tinting it. I just want to grayscale this thing. So wherever this is, doesn't matter. I'm going to go over here in the middle, drag all the way to the left and just, just kind of slide down until it's somewhat darker. I'm not adding any actual color, just darkening it. If you want to add color, you want to change out the background, feel free, go ahead, have fun with it. But I just really want the front to separate from the back and make it pop a little bit more. The other thing I want to do is go to these trees and I want to adjust the speed down just a little bit. And we're going to do this with the prefab. So I'm going to, well, let's see, I'm on the tree. Let's click the little arrow here to go into prefab edit mode. And let's just turn the tree speed down to, actually, I think I want to go to like half the speed. I'm going to turn it down to three. Now we can go back out of prefab edit mode with this little arrow and hit play. Now my trees should all be slowed down and my dragon sped up. There we go. So I've got a dragon coming by and he should come right back. There we go. Look at that. Looking good. So now we have something we can dodge. Um, we can actually play and have a little bit of a challenge and have some fun. So get this part working. And then in the next section, I think we will add in some audio. We'll start making this dragon kind of more dangerous, make him go up and down, do all kinds of fun things, we'll start putting in more dragons, and then finally start shooting at these dragons. And again, if you like this stuff, don't forget to share it with everybody you know, all your friends. They definitely want to see it, right? And like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff.